Okay, now I think you can hear me and also you can watch my, my video. Hello, good morning, everybody. Let me hide this screen. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for connecting to this new BTS talk session. Uh, it's a pleasure for me uh, being here with uh, you. I hope we are going to enjoy and have a nice time together during this next hour, more or less. But before starting this webinar, please let me introduce myself. Maybe some of you may know who I am, but others uh, may not. My name is Isaac Guask. I'm a telecommunication engineer with uh, more than 14 years of experience in IT field and specialized in IT risk and cybersecurity management. I work as an assessor and also I'm currently uh, working as a professor at Barcelona Technology School, teaching cybersecurity and IT uh, legal in the master's program of this school. And that's, we have decided to create this uh, webinar. Now that I have introduced myself, it's time to introduce the topic of this uh, webinar, cyber in times of COVID, we call that. In this webinar, we are going to talk about the new risks and threats that we are experiencing because of the COVID-19 situation. During this session, we will address these issues with the participation of the expert, DPO, OSSEC director, and cybersecurity manager from multinational companies with explanations, demos, and a round table with all the participants. And who has been thought this webinar? We have, uh, we are going to work through uh, across three blocks mainly. The first block is the introduction of the topic. Then we are going to move to the second block, which is the panel discussion block, where all our experts will share with us their opinion of the topics that we have already talked in the introduction. And last but not least, we are going to move to a third block, the question and answers. Uh, block from the audience. So during the conference, you can write your questions in the QA Zoom section. Uh, for this webinar, we have disabled the chat option, but you can also uh, send our questions in QA uh, feature. You can address if you want questions to a specific panelist, uh, just try to, to mark or enable that this uh, question uh, is going to be read for all the audience in order to let us uh, see the list of all questions and, and try to, to select uh, questions that have not been answered during the, during the conference. So let's start with this uh, webinar. COVID-19 at this time, uh, it is not uh, new for any of us, has impacted our life in, in many ways. Uh, this, is, this is a fact. And technology doesn't escape from this uh, new reality. The current situation of confinement and teleworking is increasing the cyber risk to which we are exposed. And this fact has caused cyber attacks to increase considerably, taking advantage of the current and vulnerable situation. But the question is, why are these risks increasing? And why are these risks increasing so fast? I would say because of three key facts. The first key point in, in the response of why these uh, cybersecurity risks are increasing is because of new habits that the people are, are taking. We are adopting new ways of communication during these days. Yeah, you have a, a picture of my coworkers and me ready for another Zoom meetings, as the memes from internet says. Maybe some professionals usually use these uh, channels, but not all the society are used to uh, use Zoom apps, Skypes, and etc. For example, we are seeing doctors attending uh, their patients by WhatsApp or Skype singers and musicians performing live concerts on the internet, 
Um, even nursery school teachers having live session with parents and children, people being indoor, sport training, etc. Other activities has explored the network traffic and the amount of information that we are sharing. Just as a curiosity, for example, there are some vendors that have developed specific tools to help the organization to monitor specific Zoom traffic in their networks, just to know how many meetings is the company performing, how many participants are connected to those meetings and monitor if there have some alerts and issues in these communications. All these new habits are involving new ways of information sharing, as I've said, and also new IT system usage. Companies have had to quickly adapt their system to external connections and facilitate information sharing environments. But they have not always invested enough resources to train their employees. And sometimes companies uh, haven't got uh, enough time to do that. In most cases, these new habits are exposing companies to these uh, new risks. And besides, sometimes they neither have the knowledge nor cybersecurity profiles uh, inside their companies to meet those needs and deal with that new risks. The second key factor, I would say, is are the threats and the attacks that we are experiencing. Email phishing, for example, here you have in, in your screens an example of a real phishing that these days is uh, walking across the, the internet. This is a real email that an uh, end user received apparently from or head organization. As you may know, this uh, technique is carried out by email spoofing. It's the victim receive a, an email with a fake email sender's address in order to disguise itself as a trustworthy entity. In this case, like a World Health Organization or in Spain, the, the administration uh, is another good example. But phishing attacks are not the only ones. We have malware attacks, extortions, and a big list of scams that are also good examples of uh, that new threats and, and common attacks. For example, Google has developed a, a specific uh, landing page to aware the users of these common uh, scams and some tips to try to identify them in order to, to avoid uh, and open uh, an email or a, a malicious link containing uh, malicious software, for example. One of the main changes that has uh, that have helped to raise uh, this attack also is the number of our potential victims. We are seeing that we are moving uh, from a cooperative uh, and controlled uh, environments to individual and could say less controlled uh, environments. In that sense, it's, it's good to remember that attackers take advantage not only uh, from companies of vulnerabilities, but also uh, to the users of vulnerabilities to, to, to exploit them. And security measures in, in company are stronger than end users' security measures. And, and attackers uh, well know that, and, and they have focus on, on these uh, end users, not only to obtain personal information, but also to obtain business information too. Okay, we have the first key point is new habits. Second key point could be the threats, the amount of threats and, and attack that we are experiencing. But there's another key point. This is about user habits and user security awareness. How many of you, for example, have same password for different internet accounts? Or how many of you are sharing all the, all the activities that you are doing at home via Instagram or whatever. Do we have any responsibility as individuals in these uh, risk uh, levels that we have nowadays? Of course, because 
Mixing our personal environment with the corporate environment is increasing that risk. And just to name some examples, teleworking has forced a lot of users to use the personal devices for professional purposes. We are just connecting to a Zoom meeting, for example, with the iPad of our daughter or of our uh, son. Uh, we know that the major information security breaches come from human error. So you can start to imagine how dangerous is mixing these uh, both environments. As I've said, people uh, often use same password for many IT systems and internet services. How many of you have same password for corporate laptop or your Gmail account or Amazon or, or Zoom uh, app? And how many of you have changed your Wi-Fi settings by default? Mm. It's not a, a common, uh, a common thing that we usually do. All these trends, the new habits, threats, and security awareness, are an explosive cocktail for information security. And we could say that this is the main causes that are uh, helping the risk uh, to increase in this, in this situation. And that's what we are talking about with our security professionals. So the question is, what do the cybersecurity professionals think about this situation? Please let me introduce our panel of discussion for today. And with this uh, presentation, we are starting the second block of the webinar. Today, we have connected with us uh, Borja Verastegui as Offensive Security Director at Game Sector. Welcome, Borja. We have also Oscar Sanchez as cybersecurity expert at luxury sector. Welcome you too, Oscar. Thank you so much for being here. We have Jose Maria Alvarez as a global data protection officer at Pharma Sector. Welcome, Jose Maria. And Manuel Castillo as a cybersecurity manager at services sector. All the panelists already know the, the dynamic of this, of this session. I'm going to launch some questions to each of the, the, the panelists. And then once the panelists has uh, responded this uh, question, the other panelists could add or comment and we can open a debate regarding this, uh, this topic. So now I'm going with you, Borja, as a first uh, speaker. Uh, recently, we have heard and, and read about many vulnerabilities uh, regarding Zoom app. But from your point of view, I know that you have already analyzed uh, a little bit this, this app. What really happened to that vulnerabilities published about Zoom? There are two, not? Yeah. What can you say? Um, yeah. Uh, can, I, can I start my video? I don't know if I can start my video. So I would like people to see my face while I talk. Okay, yeah, perfect. Yeah, thank you. Um, hi, uh, so yeah, about that, the, the vulnerabilities that have been happening in Zoom recently, and I, I did a bit of research on that, uh, uh, mostly out of curiosity, right? Because it, it sounds weird. Uh, I, I dedicated to find vulnerabilities most of my time. And it was surprising when I saw so many articles in, in non-specialized uh, uh, media talking about uh, vulnerabilities in Zoom. Uh, the fact is that with Zoom, something will happen, right? Uh, being so popular in such a short amount of time uh, clearly hurt them somehow because uh, they, they, they jumped from the really specialized um, sites that are talking about vulnerabilities into directly to the mainstream media because I think mainly because they've been in the news uh, uh, showing uh, that the VIP people, I would say, yeah, VIP people, it's kind of redundant, but VIPs all over the world are using film to communicate during these times, right? Um, most of the vulnerabilities, if you read about them and you know about vulnerabilities are like kind of common stuff, like day-to-day -day things. Um, for example, one of the things I think the most impactful one was that uh, 
some researchers found out that it was possible for you to access one random website that was prepared to exploit this attack. And that site was going to be able to make you jump into a Zoom uh, meeting without you doing anything, right? So you jump into the site and then the site made something, exploited that vulnerability, and you're connected to a Zoom meeting if you had the Zoom client installed. Um, that's true something that you would like to have fixed, but to, to get fixed, but they they fix it, right? They, they did it pretty quick and they have a really solid uh, security response in that regard. Uh, the, rest of, uh, the rest of the vulnerabilities are kind of normal. And actually when you read, for example, the other day I read, malware being packed in some installer and i was like oh wow that that sounds bad like that sounds really bad if there is malware in the zoom installer it means that someone actually managed to hack into zoom and then put malware into the installer but then you jump into the body of the of the article and they were saying that some malicious people are getting the zoom installers like the legitimate ones putting malware inside them and then giving it to people. So people would install Zoom and have the malware at the same time. It's like, okay, but that has nothing to do with Zoom, right? That could happen with absolutely every other software. Uh, it's, it's, it's weird, but again, I, the summary is that I think they're, they're acting really well uh, in terms of security. They have a back bounty program. They're responding super fast. And all the vulnerabilities that have been in the news the last days, they've been patched already, right? They hit the news because Zoom goes public with them. So just, uh, I mean, my recommendation would be double check and read the body of the, of, the, of the article or the news that you're reading about security vulnerabilities and then discern the difference between the, the, the title of the article and the body itself, which sometimes is really, really different. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Borja. I don't know if any of the other panelists want to add something else to Borja's speech. Hi, this is Jose. Uh, 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 the video? No, okay, perfect. Well, as, as Borja said, I think that the use of this video conferencing solution uh, has, of course, skyrocketed uh, during the last uh, two months, maybe one month. And uh, a great deal has been uh, written about its security and privacy features, uh, not end to end decryption, that servers are in China or security vulnerabilities, etc. cetera. Uh, however, I'd like to, to, to stand out for soon uh, because I think that vulnerabilities exist uh, and none of the current market solutions are free to not suffer a breach. In fact, maybe one week ago, we also could uh, know that uh, the Teams application uh, for of Microsoft also reported a, 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 well, a security flaw related to a GIF image or something like that. Uh, I think that the, the point is how to react to, to these, uh, to these uh, vulnerabilities and how to manage, uh, how to manage them. Um, I think this is the, the, the most important. Uh, and in addition to this, uh, um, um, vulnerabilities not only depend on, on them, but also into the IT departments of companies when configure this, uh, this, the system features, uh, because uh, what maybe an error of configuration makes the solution even more dangerous than the, 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 the vulnerability that, that, that has the application. So uh, of course, Zoom is not a bad tool. Uh, the, 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 the bad thing would be the bad configuration or, or, or if the Zoom company uh, wouldn't react to, the, to, to trying to, to mitigate those vulnerabilities identified. Uh, in fact, I would also say that uh, Zoom is also taking advantage of, of, this, uh, of, this, uh, of th this news that have been released on the media uh, to become stronger in the field of, of, of security of information. They are working a lot uh, related to, to, to trying to fix these kind of, of vulnerabilities. Thank you so much, uh, Jose. I absolutely agree with you that we have a responsibility as, uh, as a company and, and also as a, an individuals in order to, 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 to read carefully all the features that is uh, 
app offers to to us and try to to use to use it in in, in a proper way. Now, let me go with uh, Oscar. I have uh, another question for you. Uh, Hi, how are you? Good morning, Oscar. Oscar, we have talked about uh, new habits, yes. uh, and, and now we are talking about uh, Zoom. And we have seen that uh, human factor uh, is one of these key elements that helps to, to, to increase the risk uh, nowadays. But how, Im how important is the, the human factor behind uh, these uh, cyber incidents? Absolutely, because at the end, the human factor is is one of the of the most important thing in a civil incident. You you have to think that at least the ninety percent of the cyber attacks tries to cheat or confuse uh, every, everyone. Okay, as a, has a target of, of a human in the reality and then in the digital world. And even or despite all the technical measures that you can put in front of your company or even in front of your of your home or your personal life, okay, and to prevent an, any incident, and the last actions at the end is decided by a person, okay, uh, someone that is behind the keyboard and decide, in most of cases, to put the, their credentials in a fake website, and they decide, as Borsa said, no, to download. Uh, uh, modified insta Zoom installer or other one, eh? or Teams installer, in order to deploy a malware in, in your computer or whatever. And in a company or in, a, or in another situation, you can to block or to stop thousands of phishing emails. But if only one email arrives, that this could happen, okay? And you have a, pot an, an, a potential incident. Because when arrive to to a to an end user, users most of times don't think twice how the important it is uh, to to look this email, to look a website, to think if okay, what this person is send me send me to this uh, PDF or this uh, installer, or why this company is telling me that I have to enter my credentials. To whatever, okay, and this is this is the most dangerous problem that hitting our lives, and especially now in the in during this coronavirus crisis, because at the end, all all, all of us are in our house, our our lives uh, are digital transformed in fifth in fifty days, okay, and all the governmental alerts. All the shopping that most of us are doing, all the meetings with colleagues and meetings with friends and, and, and whatever, has become digital. And if our, all of our lives has become digital, we have to uh, take care about what we are doing in a in a, in the digital life. And this is it, this is the the human factor behind uh, most of the inc the cyber security incidents. I, re I read. That Google says that in 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 April they blocks more or less 18 million coronavirus scams mails every day. This is a huge volume only for Google. Imagine Hotmail and other public uh, email services, and you imagine all the companies. Most of companies uh, they they seen how they uh, phishing and and. And scam email email alerts has increased uh, by three or by four. This is very very huge. And at the end, all of these scams and these phishing goes to a human target, a person. This is absolutely true. And what what we can do against that? When when it arrives an email, we have to think twice. Okay, is what I said. Is this email from the right person? Have I bought really that? Why my, my bank is asking for, for me for, for credentials? Have I really need to enter my credentials to do the terms of, of conditions or I don't know, Spotify or, or, or whatever? Okay, please look twice. 
the URL, the URL of a site. Most of the time, phishing landing pages are behind some nonsense URLs. Other times, the URLs is pretty similar, but you can, if you think twice, you think only five seconds, probably you have to decide in a correct way that, okay, this is a scam or, or, or these are trying to cheat me. Okay, if you have a doubt, please ask something. Ask your cybersecurity department or ask a friend that knows about that or, or try to inform about that, okay? <clears throat> As a person, you can you can think that every time you invest five seconds to think twice in front of an email, you have you are saving to your company or yourself millions of impossible damage that could could come with an email or malicious sites. Awareness on the on digital risk is the last mile of the cybersecurity, and you have to think that you are, you are a target of cyber criminals, both on personal on personal or, or professional life. You have to think that this is very, very important. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I don't know if uh, our panelists, uh, maybe Manuel or, or, or Borja, as a, as a professional, could add something that we could uh, do as, a, as an individual. Yeah, uh, every, every time I, I hear someone talking about the, the phishing emails and the importance of that. Uh, so in, in, in my case, for example, I, I do red team exercises with my team, right? So we actually simulate attackers, like we become attackers for real. And uh, in the end, the easiest and safest thing for us to do is just to find information publicly about a certain number of employees, build a nice phishing email and send it. Like if we do that, Imagine what the bad actors are doing, right? Uh, this, it, it's still the easiest way. So yeah, I totally agree on that. On the, it's a scary. That it's a scary. When, yeah. when you when you do a, a phishing exercise, it's a scary. The usually the results. <laughs> correct. Correct. So by my side, uh, I would like to add that it's very important uh, from the point of view of companies to develop a security awareness programs. Uh, targeted directly to the employees in order to reinforce the education and based on the capabilities that they have uh, to, to fight against the, this situation that they suffer day by day, receiving in several emails but, uh, from uh, companies, from government, from colleagues inside of the company. So it is important to, from the companies to perform uh, these kind of programs to, to reinforce the capacities because the, the security, uh, the, the last uh, element into the change is the human behavior. So it is important to that the companies uh, perform these kind of uh, uh, programs in, in order to, to fight against this situation. This is a very important uh, point. I agree with you, Manu. And also, I want to, to add that uh, at BTS, uh, at least in, in, in our classes, we, we perform some kind of uh, phishing attack or simulated phishing attack in order to, to aware and train our students in that kind of techniques and, and see how too easy it is to, to receive uh, an email, apparently, from a legitimate uh, uh, sender. So, I agree. I agree with you. Yes. You uh, in, in that point, uh, I got some some numbers that I can share uh, anonymously. Uh, I remember that once uh, in my company, we performed a, a, a phishing attack for a company who requested uh, this kind of services. And at the end, we shared these uh, results with the sale level. Uh, and the numbers were uh, of a, incredible because uh, most than the 35% of the sale levels, uh, close to 100 persons in, in that meeting, uh, they click on the mail and they, and they add the credentials uh, with, for this uh, phishing attack. So at the end, they were very impressive and they never uh, think about that uh, even being um, professional that during the last 20 years they have been working on with system with computers 
but they never realized that. So that is the, 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 the important part of the security to consider to perform security awareness programs. Thank you so much, uh, Manu. Mm. We'll talk a little bit more in some, in some minutes with you. But now let me go with uh, Jose Maria. Jose Maria, I have another question uh, for you. You're a, uh, a DPO in, in your company. Uh, as, as all the companies also, you are uh, using these uh, video calls, uh, apps to, to perform your, your online meetings, uh, etc. But are the companies prepared for teleworking and to face its related changes? And uh, as a privacy expert, how COVID-19 and, and these uh, video call apps and, and way of working could affect to the privacy of, of the employees of that uh, companies? Well, first, I've not participated in the last discussion about employee awareness, but of course, it is one of the challenges that the COVID-19 situation uh, brings to us. And uh, it's like, let, let me uh, answer you in two different, in two different uh, uh, sections, let's say, yeah, yeah. because uh, I would like to, to, uh, to mix up uh, the working challenges with privacy, because even though they are maybe certainly related, uh, I think it would take me a, a little bit of more time than, than, than expected. So uh, if you don't mind, uh, I'll ask you to this uh, later on. Okay. Sure, please. Course. Perfect. So uh, related to teleworking and, and, and the, challenges, the challenges that it brings to this situation, um, I've looked for some numbers and teleworking is far from being an usual practice in Spain. In fact, according to a certain statistics of uh, Eurostat, in 2018 it was around 4.3% of uh, usual in business using teleworking. So uh, COVID-19 uh, has uh, become a technological experiment for the vast majority of companies since uh, from one day to the other, uh, you know, in a context of urgency and a lack of preparation, uh, companies had to lock down and move all their employees uh, at home. However, I, I wonder if all those companies know what to do in such circumstances or if it was a, an action reaction approach uh, I am afraid that in most of the cases uh, was the later uh, reaction approach and think on, on, on the go, uh, what are the most appropriate measures. Uh, even though uh, a scenario of, <clears throat> sorry, and a scenario of pandemics uh, was very unlikely maybe six uh, months ago, uh, I, I wonder uh, whether companies in general have identified in advance, uh, for instance, those critical processes that are required to maintain business. Uh, I mean, a critical process, which may relay, for instance, on a certain specific machinery that if interrupted, it would, uh, it would take, I don't know, a certain considerable period of time, you restart it again and prioritize, for instance, another processes uh, not so urgent or not so critical for the business. For, for the business. Um, another thing to identify, which are those minimum resources required to continue operating, and I mean workstations, network connection, access to services. Um, most of these minimum resources, as I said before, uh, were identified on, on the go if, not, if a thoughtful exercise had not been done previously in, in advance. Uh, and finally, uh, we have the ingredients, processes, assets, but which are the strategies to face uh, potential adverse situations Although the expected scenario, of course, could not be related to pandemics, but I don't know, uh, an inability to access to a facilities scenario. This is more uh, usual or could be more likely to, to happen. In most cases, uh, strategies were not tested or even defined at all. So uh, I think that if there is no culture or there is no intention of uh, doing these kind of things or it's not, people is not used to teleworking, it would not be a strange uh, finding bad solutions or bad strategies such as opening uh, RDP protocols to the internet, for instance. Uh, for, for, I don't know, focusing in, on remote working and challenges as the, the, the question is, uh, is about. Uh, for situations, how can remote workers access to corporate resources? Uh, is their corporate computer properly configured? 
uh, on the contrary, do we allow bring your own devices? We've heard about this before. Uh, and maybe in these circumstances, the policies that these devices have are not so strong, are not so uh, yeah, strong as the company as the company had, because when we are within the, the perimeter of our company, we are in a security bubble, let's that, say, that, say that way. But at home, the things changes. And additionally, how these uh, remote accesses are done. Um, should we use a VPN? This is a suitable solution. Do we need a virtualized desktop? Or as I said before, we don't know what to do and we open the RDP, RDP ports to the internet. Uh, these are questions that should be answered in advance. But not only this, uh, do we have enough bandwidth to support this increase, this increase of connections? Our VPN concentrator, if we use VPN, allows all this traffic. Have we tested it previously, or we as, we are waiting to, to to try when we send everybody home? And please connect, and if it works, perfect. If not, what happens? And uh, to the end, find, uh, employee awareness to 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 relate to to in connection with all the other things that we've discussed. If there is no not culture, uh, it would not be strange finding solutions such as fishing or an increase in fishing. We've seen that or certain stati statistics says that the fishing task has increased during this period. But beyond this, uh, employees may send their own or send uh, corporate information to their own email, to their own corporate, uh, sorry, to their own personal equipment, to their own public cloud, I mean Dropbox, OneDrive, without the expected corporate security measures. So uh, for this reason, of course, uh, employee security awareness is a very important consideration uh, related to the risk factor that Oscar has, uh, the human risk factor that Oscar has explained before. Uh, th thank you so much, uh, Jose. I, I pick up a, a, a concept that you have, uh, that you have mentioned during your uh, speech. Uh, you, you ask yourself if companies has think it previously, if our bandwidth is already prepared in order to, to accept the amount of uh, uh, information that we, are, that we are sharing. And we are seeing these days that platforms like Netflix and, and YouTube are trying to reduce the, the video quality in order to uh, reduce the bandwidth of all the networks because even cities are some, sometimes not, not prepared to, to accept that amount of uh, traffic. So it's a very, very good, uh, good point. I don't know if uh, in this case, Borja, Oscar or, or Manu wants to add anything else to Jose's speech. I think in general terms, uh, this highlighted that uh, most of the companies that thought were technologically uh, advanced were, though even those companies were not ready for this. And, and as Jose said, like there were so many considerations to take into account. Uh, uh, and the VPN example is perfect. Like, oh yeah, we have VPN. Like we, we, we can work from home because we have a VPN. Yeah, but your VPN is not ready for all your employees to use the VPN at the same time, right? And it will crash. Uh, so yeah, it's, 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 it's a funny time from the technological point of view too. And from the serious degree point of view, of course. Yes, it's true because one of the key points about that, the bandwidth, for example, it's not only the, you can to assume that all your employees or worldwide it's connecting through internet is, we have, we have to think about that this is a, a long period. We don't, we don't have uh, no idea about when this scenario will end. And we have to maintain this during a long period of time. And I think that no one company or no one government has this in mind that to, to maintain in a long, long, very, in a very long situation, the current bandwidth, the current uh, systems uh, for, for, for all the people. That's uh, at the end, it's in home and teleworking from home and using services, not only teleworking, you know, RC, Netflix or, or whatever. Yeah, uh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Oscar, thank you so much. 
Let me go uh, this time with uh, Manuel. Manuel, this is your turn now. I have a, a question uh, for you. Uh, as a, you work in, in, in professional services, so you, your day to day, uh, you, you try to, to advise companies in how they uh, should be, be prepared uh, and train and, 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 and design strategies in order to, to calculate or mitigate the risk that we are talking about. But what kind of cybersecurity measures should be drawn out in, in, in that uh, situation? Uh, Jorge, for example, talk about uh, business continuity in some of his uh, of his uh, speech. But uh, what's your opinion on that point? Okay, uh, thank you, Isaac. Before asking your question, uh, I would like to to make a, a small context. Uh, as most of you maybe know, I work for Deloitte. So I will try to, to pick it up some information that we deliver globally. So in order to, to, to say what is the, the, my point of view related with this, with, with this question. Okay. So right now uh, at Deloitte, we have developed under the current situation of COVID-19, uh, a high level of global brief uh, that focuses on some of the most current cyber threats and trends as identified by the cyber threat intelligence team, uh, which is near uh, with near term recommendation on managing cyber risk to respond and recover and treat through COVID-19 pandemic. In this sense, uh, part of my intervention will be based on the uh, some relevant points already published and which you can find on the internet. So as a big start point, uh, now commented, uh, it is important to realize that in the past 30 days, uh, there has been an increase in malware and phishing campaigns related to COVID-19, including targeted attacks uh, on no organization, as you commented previously, um, uh, the World Health Organization and Gates Foundation, for example. While the overall volume of threat is an increasing, Threat actors have increasingly uh, shifted COVID-19 scams to capitalize on fears around the pandemic. This is, a, this is evident uh, in the increase of malware samples incorporating COVID-19 themes collected by, by Deloitte. Considering the, the previous uh, scenario, uh, it is imperative to move from caution to action, following maybe the next two approaches uh, these two approaches uh, I would like to share with you. Um, Do you want to share your screen? Uh, so let me uh, yes, stop my, my screen sharing. Uh, okay, now I I think you have the, the control. And you can now share okay. your screen. Okay, did you see the, the image? Yeah, yeah, perfect, perfect. Okay, well, these uh, two approaches that we think that are very interesting to, to share with you uh, are these ones. For example, the number one, uh, as mentioned previously in my introduction, managing cyber risk to respond, which is split in three, three specific points. Uh, these are proactive pre-plan, uh, which means, for example, review cyber incident response playbooks and adapt necessary activities or step for a remote working model uh, in order to anticipate to the COVID-19 attack scenarios. This is the, the, the main point of the uh, one of the active activities that you that we need to, to perform uh, if we work in a, in a company and if we have the, the role of to, to manage and implement some uh, activities. The number two, diligently monitor, uh, which means, for example, guide and monitor how teams are collaborating remotely and ensure employees are notified and aware of the tools and their authorized processes. And the uh, number three, refresh security controls. Uh, in, this, in this point, I will move to the last column, which I, I, I think that is more interesting than the summary that we have in the, in the second one. Uh, but in this point, uh, the, the main action that we need to, to perform with the 
IT technician or security technicians is to improve the login details and rotation period for data, uh, for example. And in the other hand, review the security control for tools and technology used for the remote access. Uh, at the end, that we need to, to, to push on the company is to try to implement uh, security controls that make more sure our process to connect to our companies or to our services or to the services that another one is sharing with us. Okay, for example, implementing controls like uh, two-factor authentications, um, VPNs, and things like that. This is the first approach. Um, and the second approach is this one. Okay, and the second approach is more spread, uh, which, is, which has six points, uh, all present on the screen. But the, I will try to, to resum all of them. Defensively advisory. Uh, with, which is more or less uh, applicable to cybersecurity and privacy requirements related with more element, uh, elements like fiduciary duties and industry expectation. This is a high level activity, which is not normally uh, uh, performed by uh, low level roles. Uh, this is a high level activities that need to be uh, pushed by the C level. But on the other hand, we have, for example, the second one, cyber crisis and pandemic incident response. This is um, matched with the, the, the number one point that we mentioned previously. But the, the objective is to uh, reinforce this process in order to make them more stronger uh, and to, to be ca uh, capable to, to fight against the incident response uh, activities. The, the third one is remote training and assessment. We have commented previously uh, with the, another colleagues uh, and it's based on the, the awareness that employees need to receive from companies uh, in order to reinforce the capacity to analyze and detect by, this, by this themselves uh, any incident that will uh, arrive our computers. The fourth one, uh, third party risk assessment and supply chain management. Uh, it is important to understand what are uh, the risks that we are facing with our relation with our contractors, with our um, clients, but uh, we need to evaluate what is the scenario, even in, on the paper that we have signed some contracts and things like that, in order to evaluate if we have made, if we have put on them uh, of the measures uh, necessary to, to litigate or to fight against any situation based on the incident that can occur. And the fifth element, uh, threat management and situational awareness. Um, this at the end is remotely assessed and deploy technology to improve their visibility and protection across your infrastructure and meet remote workforce. And the last one, threat intelligence, uh, which means uh, to deploy uh, for example, diverse uh, capacities to analyze what is uh, saying uh, out there on the internet about our company and try to analyze this information in order to proactively detect and um, fight against any issue that it will be uh, saying about our company, uh, even true or, or, or about uh, information. So with, this, uh, with these two approaches, uh, it is uh, more or less compressed what the companies need to do uh, in order to fight against this current situation of the COVID-19. Everything is connected with traditional uh, strategic uh, actions, uh, for sure, but these uh, pictures uh, have been prepared um, to be ad more adequate to the current situation. Thank you so much, uh, Manu. It's a very interesting kind of map to, to summarize uh, the, the minimum strategy that the companies uh, can follow during these, during these times, because uh, we know that major of uh, companies don't, don't really know how to start uh, acting uh, against this, this situation. So having this kind of uh, road maps uh, absolutely help uh, the organization to, to, to start to performing some kind of uh, work. I don't know if, if uh, Oscar Borja or also uh, Jose wants to add something else to that. I want to add to the to the as 
one thing that Manu says, and I have it's a quite interesting exercise because about the remote and training assessment, this is very, very useful, but we see that it's more useful for users when you not only put the focus in the company risks, but you put the focus even in the personal risks. And when you talk to to employee about the risk of a phishing, if you make an example or, or you put focus not only in the, when you receive a, a, co a corporate email, blah, 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 blah. If you reinforce in the personal way that be careful when you receive an email from Correos or from Amazon or from something that hits his personal life, they put inside his mind more efficiently that when you only put the focus in the in the corporate side. We see that we, we see that and we use that this double side, okay, to play with the with the with the Warner's plans. And this is very, very, very useful. And usually the people uh, pay more attention when you are talking in something that they could receive, and not in a risk that could receive in the in their, their professional life. I don't know if it's only a uh, thank you, thank you so much. I think we have uh, we have covered all the uh, different panelists. Uh, you have uh, answered that the questions that I have uh, prepared uh, for you. But I think now it's time uh, uh, for our audience. So we have uh, collected some of the questions that you are writing. You can continue. Uh, send your questions in, in the QA section of, uh, of Zoom. Uh, now we are going to, to pick up some of these uh, questions and I want to, to launch, generate that, that question uh, in order to one of uh, you, if you want to, to, to reply to, to the audience, would be so, so nice. So let me move on uh, our questions and answers section. We have uh, one question, for example, that uh, let's say so you are talking about uh, phishing. Uh, the question is, but uh, what do you suggest to do it with cookies? Uh, in brackets says the usual request, uh, you can accept them, uh, you can change the, the parameters. Uh, do we must accept them? Do we must to reject them? Uh, what kind of uh, good practice uh, can be in 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 these uh, in these terms? This question is from Francesca. Thank you so much, Francesca. Well, I don't know if you, know, if you I can, wanted to. I can give my opinion at least. Uh, I can give my opinion on that. Uh, uh, even though on. even though I work in the in the sector that I work in, I mean cybersecurity. Uh, I'm not specifically paranoid about this, uh, but I really think that we need to be aware that there are different profiles of users, right? Um, so for example, in my case, I may care a bit more on where uh, the websites that, that I use are tracking my behavior. Uh, uh, in, in my mom's case, for example, maybe she prefers to deal with that small breach of privacy of someone being able to plant cookies and track you and, and uh, suggest you uh, better ads uh, in exchange for a, a better user experience, right? Uh, so the thing is, the, if the CEO of your company is someone that could be targeted in a malicious way by any of those the small breaches or risks to privacy, then you should be more aware on the importance of the tracking or not. Um, in most of the cases, I really think that, it, that the, the tracking, the cookies are uh, used for something that is not especially malicious, right? That is just giving you a better user experience. <laughs> so that's, that's that, just my opinion. Uh, yeah, I, totally yeah agree. It's true. It's, I agree because it's, it's necessary and, and most of the time in, in our digital life, we need the cookies 
to, to do this, this better experience, better tracking, better, better segmentation of users. And, in, yeah, and most of times you want these segmentations in order that you receive uh, offers that are more targeted to your profile. But I think that the a cookie for, for itself, it's, for instance, it's not, it's not a risk. The problem could be if you can track someone or, or you can profile in, in a different way that could be used against you, okay? But for instance, you can accept the cookies, probably when you go most of the markets or the web pages. In, internally, you want to accept these cookies because you want to this better experience. And in fact, there is no problem. Yeah, and you can delete after the navigation if you are more uh, more aware of your your privacy. But this is all, it's my opinion. Yeah, it's right. From a security perspective, I agree with Borja's and Oscar's statement. From a privacy perspective, I would say, and answer to your question, if the web page is properly configured, uh, cookies shouldn't uh, not uh, should not allow, uh, should not uh, prevent the use of the service. If they are properly configured, I mean, there are different types of cookies, technical and functional for advertising, for social networks. And the first thing you should see when opening uh, in the landing page of, uh, of a website is uh, this cookie banner that allows you to select which of the cookies you want to you want to 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 have, to, to have in place. Yeah. In addition to this, uh, there are different types of cookies. Uh, Oscar said now there are ones that are. Uh, totally deleted once you finish your your browser there are another that persist on your on your on your browser uh, even though you turn off your computer uh, you can manage them from the settings of your of your internet uh, of your browser you all have specific instructions Mozilla Firefox uh, uh, Explorer all of them have uh, the, the, the settings for deleting these cookies and prevent the, the installation of these cookies uh, in advance but however uh, uh, as they said, uh, most times cookies allow you to have a more uh, a smooth uh, navigation through the site. So you can do it, but also be careful because maybe some services uh, uh, sometimes are, pre are prevented. Uh, thank you, thank you. I'm not panelist this time, but uh, I just wanted to add, uh, for example, used to, to delete the, the cookies after searching or looking for some GIF uh, to, to my relative, uh, especially if I don't want to, to be detected, uh, we have some some non surprise in, in, in that in that day. Okay, we have uh, more questions. I have some sort of written uh, here. Uh, we have talked during our our speech uh, regarding the the, the, the the privacy and the and the and the impact. Uh, I don't know if um, some of you could give us some some tips when we are using personal devices in, in, in professional environments. Uh, maybe we cannot have uh, different uh, laptops or we cannot have uh, different physical uh, spaces to, to prevent or have uh, information uh, separate and, and, and safely from other kind of uh, information and, and papers. So uh, as an individual during this uh, period, what kind of uh, easy security measures can we do? Oh. Should I start again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, if nobody example. wants to jump, I can. I, 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 I talk a lot. I probably have an opinion on, on everything, even though it may not be the best one, but I'll probably have an opinion. Um, for me, actually, that case is extremely scary from the cybersecurity point of view because uh, the most important thing is the awareness of the user, right? If they, are, if they are used to do some weird and un, uh, un, unsecure stuff in their laptops, and now that laptop became the the, the working tool, uh, it's from the security point of view, it's a nightmare. So I would say that the best thing that you can do is not actually any technical measure. Like it's not installing anything. It's probably following carefully the guidelines that they gave in your company because 
we usually spend a lot of time building those guidelines and uh, nobody pays too much attention to it. Like we try to make them as, as condensed and as useful as possible. And, uh, and they are usually there for a reason, right? It's not that we just dump recommendations and, and put them in, inside one, one PDF and we send it to everyone. Uh, just follow those guidelines because they are, they are there for, for a certain number of reasons and just be, be extra careful. Think that it's, it's, if you do something, like if you fall from a patient, if you get infected with malware in your personal laptop, they, it may have like a serious impact there. So the same recommendations as always, like just, just be cautious. If something sounds or looks weird, uh, contact the security team on your company. Like that, that's the best way of dealing with, with this kind of thing. You see, you see a weird email, just don't open, just contact with your uh, cybersecurity team by whatever the, the correct mean is. Uh, for example, in our case, we usually ask the users to drag and drop the email into uh, another new email as an attachment. So they can just send it to us, we can analyze it and then uh, tell them. And most of, the, most of the times it's just, it's okay. It's, for example, it's just phishing don't answer. It's just the normal phishing don't open the links. Uh, sometimes it's, it looks like a legitimate email, even though it looks weird. Uh, and other times it's like, oh, wait a second, we're going to start an investigation because this is a targeted attack. Like this is malware and this looks uh, more important. So. Yes, I would like to, to, to add um, in the case of the personal IT elements for teleworking, uh, maybe this is a small thing, but I think that is very important uh, maybe our companies, they are deploying our laptops or mobiles with a, in a secure way, uh, with a policy, with a specific hardening to, uh, to change some parameters of the elements uh, to, to make them more secure. But maybe at home, uh, we just trust with our personal computers and uh, out of the box. But I will try to, to suggest to to try to invest, maybe if you can, if you can afford to invest in a antivirus, maybe better than the, the free ones that exist on the, on the, on the marketplace. Uh, I would like to try to invest a little bit, uh, paying a, 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 with a good reputation um, antivirus. And also uh, um, try to use uh, legal um, licenses of our, key, our, our computers uh, in order to, to guarantee that we can uh, receive the, the last updates of the, uh, of the operating system. And also to maintain the same rules or recommendations that we receive on our companies to maintain the same rules in our personal life avoid or to don't uh, don't believe that every single mail that we receive uh, is uh, is trusted just try to, to follow the same recommendation from the point of view of awareness and with these elements uh, maybe we we can solve our uh, digital life uh, in a good way yeah. i would i would like to to add for example did this zoom a webinar is a, another good example. We have uh, disabled by default the microphones and also webcams of all the audience in order to, to block any kind of uh, mysterious appearance. As somebody behind us or some microphone with uh, your children playing just in the same in the same room. So. There are another kind of uh, little things that we can do uh, when we are trying to combine the, those uh, both uh, environments. Does anybody have uh, another question from the audience? Remember that you can uh, read it in the Q&A section. Somebody has chat to me. Uh, let me open. I have different screens. Technology is hard. Uh, I'm managing different screens, so I'm sometimes don't know where I have to, to look at. 
But it seems we have not uh, even have uh, more more questions from our, from our audience. Uh, I don't know if the panelist wants to add anything else in about all the topics that we have talked. Well, uh, think, I have... think twice. Okay. Is that or what twice. I said before? <laughs> think twice before to click a URL to open an email. And if you doubt, please uh, tell or contact with your security department because we are very, very happy to help you and to assist you. It's <laughs> <laughs> excellent. Good recommendation. Okay. Uh, it seems our time is uh, is up. We have spent it, uh, uh, an hour, but I want to, to thank uh, all of you for your your questions, uh, uh, the the audience, and also I want to, of course to say thank you so much to Borja, Oscar, Jose Maria, and Manuel for giving us your point of view and allowing also us to share a very enriching time with you. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure. You too. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. Thanks, Thank Isaac. Thanks, the schools, for inviting me. Thank you all. Let me just uh, reinforce with a brief uh, conclusion of what we have uh, talked during this uh, webinar. During this webinar, we have described uh, three key elements that uh, helps to, to increase the, the risk that we are experiencing during this uh, COVID situation. We know that society is adopting the way it works and this could be a potential risk. We have also talked about threats and, and attacks. We have seen that attackers constantly evolve the methods and do it faster than we, we, than we imagine. So as a user and also companies, we have to be prepared and constantly update uh, and research uh, in, in, in that field in order to, to, to be aware of the last uh, trends in, in threats and, uh, and attacks. And also we have talked about the user security awareness. Uh, companies and end users must make an effort to, to understand the risk and, and apply effective uh, security measures. We have to take care that it is not uh, a corporate uh, responsibility. It is not only an individual uh, responsibility, but a collective uh, responsibility. And everyone can uh, put uh, his part of, uh, uh, of effort in, in, in that fight against the cyber risk and, and cyber threats. I hope you have found uh, interesting the, the topic and also the methodology. Uh, I want to thank you, uh, BTS, for giving this uh, chance to, to share this cyber, uh, cyber security uh, field concepts uh, with, uh, with our professionals. It's a very good uh, opportunity for, for our students uh, as well. If you want to go further in cyber security field, you can uh, meet me at uh, BTS and also contact me if you want in, in social uh, networks. If you have any doubt, please remember, uh, contact your cybersecurity team, communicate, communicate, communicate always before doing anything uh, wrong or that could cause uh, uh, an impact to your companies or even your personal uh, lives. So here you have my contact details if you want. From my side, just wanted to add uh, again, thank you so much to all of you. Hope to see you soon. Goodbye. Have a nice weekend. See you. See you guys. Bye. 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 See you. Thank you.